How's that clear? Is that good? Check one. Hot, hot Monty. Hot. Check, check. Chow, more chick, they chow. That's Chinese chicken. Chumbo, bumba. So here we are again. We're doing another fantastic LA show. Lots of great comedians. Hot comedians. You've seen them on uh, Premium Blend, 1999. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Solomon Giorgio. This is, of course, the beautiful Eric Dorian. This is our home. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Welcome. Welcome to our home. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Keith, sir. Thank you. She'll be performing tonight on the show. Thank you. It's great. Thank you. Allison Stevenson hanging out in the corner here. She's going to be telling jokes. All right. There are some more comedians in here. Esther. She's going to be on the show tonight. Sean O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Jack Knight, he's gonna be up there yeah. telling his jokes. Ahmed Barucha will be on the show. Ben, yeah. also on the show tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so crisp right there, Dave. This is two Ethiopians on one TV show. That's never happened in the history of television, by the way. Yeah, you guys. It's never happened. So, are you gonna do your accent, or am I gonna do my accent? Because one of us has to do. This. I don't know. What would it sound like if your dads talked to one another? How gay is your son? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm chillin' here, chillin' at Son and Georgia Pump. Yeah, you know I'm with my boy. Yeah, I'm chillin' with that gnome. I gotta give a shout out to all my dead gnomies. before I start. Did anybody else go to Juilliard here? <laughs> just me. Just me. Thought so. My life is crazy. My life is weird. It's funny. It's weird. I want to change my entire body. <laughs> I hate it. I want to get... Okay. Okay, don't judge. Just be open. Just be my sounding board. Like a little blonde toupee. <laughs> just like... Just like a little, like, blonde, just like... Right? 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 Can I? What else? I don't have anything else. I just have... Right now, I'm, like, balls deep in writing my memoirs. So it's just like... No, I am. I am. And when you're ageless and timeless, how do you start? Where do you start? That's why I, it drives me crazy. I see on Twitter all the time people tweeting, oh, if I had a time machine, I'd do this, I'd do that. Honey, if I had a time machine, I'd put her on the corner, put her on Craigslist. What do I need a time machine for? My life is a time machine. Do you know what I mean? You know, I was really afraid that we were going to have to perform somewhere tonight where there weren't any rats, but... We're good. I recently tricked a guy into having sex with me. Um, he was gay, and I told him I was Dave Grohl. <laughs> and we had fun. <laughs> I'm really lonely. I just started to do this thing where I'll reset a password just to receive an email. <laughs> my phone buzzes. I'm like, oh, my God, who needs me? <laughs> and then... Uh, now I go the next step and I make the security question, how are you? <laughs> and the answer is just funny, you should ask. <laughs> Please give it up for Bobcat. Go play! A lot of you are really young. A lot of you weren't even born when I was relevant. And um, I was really big in the 80s. And um, uh, your parents may have to my movies to make you. Um, so, uh, comedians, we are on planes all the time. And I was on a flight and the engine blew up. Um, I was going from L.A. to New York, and midway through, it was like, and the whole plane just started. 
That's not the noise it made. Clearly, I'm not the black guy from Police Academy who makes funny noises. It was like... <laughs> and, uh, and then there was a rooster on the wing. The engine blew up, and the plane just started creening straight towards the earth, and it was terrifying. I found out later that the pilot was just trying to land the plane as quick as possible, but it was going so fast that it was like G-force tests, like people's beverages were floating in the air, and people were <laughs> screaming. It was horrific. And I said, stay calm, see what the flight attendants are doing. That's how you survive something like this. And I look, and two flight attendants are looking out the window, and then they turn back, and they were, they were sobbing. <laughs> Crying flight attendants. Put that in your mind. That's truly the most terrifying thing I've ever seen in my life. We're here for your safety first. F that. They had checked out. They were like holding each other's hands. I always thought you were professional, Karen. And a good portion of the other people on this flight was the United States Special Olympics team. That's who was on the flight. And uh, I, I know. I can't, I, I can't change it so you're more comfortable. It was... It was 45 men and women in red, white, and blue running suits with medals. So if it wasn't the Special Olympics team, it was a really big hip-hop group with Down Syndrome. <laughs> and as the plane was careening towards the earth, the pilot got on and he's like, Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is your pilot. There's no reason to be alarmed. When we land in Cleveland, the runway will be covered entirely in foam. At the very end of the runway will be a fire truck. And I thought, oh, this is the end of my life, you know? And I, I thought about my daughter and I thought about my friends. And then, clear as a bell. A voice in the back of the plane went, Fire truck! <laughs> he was excited. He was going to see a fire truck. And I laughed. And no one else did. I looked around. I go, you didn't hear fire truck? I went from atheist to agnostic at that moment. I was like, maybe there is some sort of higher deity in the universe. And I know, I know some of you may work with mentally challenged people or you may have them in your family, but if you don't think they say or do anything funny, you're denying that they're human beings because that's the funniest thing I've ever heard another human being say. <laughs> Bye, that's right. As soon as I blew my first car, I knew that that was my one true love. Straight up vaping, for sure. I lived that vapor's life, dude. Straight up, like vapes. Oh, yeah, today. 70 plus thousand on Instagram. 70 plus thousand on Facebook. He's killing the game. Top of the vape game, top of the real life game. Top of the comedy game right here, dude. Strap Ben Bazuna, dude. Strap coming out here from Ethiopia. Yo, that's what's up, dude. <laughs> she just got vape. <laughs> you see that um, I'm not that good at reading signals and nonverbal cues. That's why I don't like courtship. Like, I can't tell if a girl likes me unless she's currently touching my penis. <laughs> and even then, I'm like, this could go either way. <laughs> I don't like texting either. Like, I never know how long I'm supposed to wait before I text the girl back. Like, this girl texted me, nothing much, you, an entire day after I texted her, what's up? <laughs> so, I'm gonna reply, just chilling, exactly one year from now. <laughs> <laughs> My goal is to make her feel 365 times as insecure as I did. <laughs> uh, a lot of people blaming ADD for kids not paying attention in school, right? But I feel like people forget that school sucks. <laughs> That's part of the problem. Like, I used to think history was boring, but history is filled with murder and deception. It's better than Shakespeare. But all I can remember in school is just shove the date down your throat. Just the date, the date, the date, the date. The date is the least interesting part of the story. I've never been telling someone a story, but I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Got these two Italian supermodels back to my apartment. One thing led to it. What day was it, man? What day was it? What was the date? Who was president? What was the climate? When did this happen? Get to the details. Like, I used to think George Washington was boring, but he's murdered people. He went to war. He turned down being king of America. He's probably stabbed someone in the face with a knife at the end of a gun. Like, he killed people back in the end. I'd be like, I'm sorry, I'll remember this forever. <laughs> But all I remember in school is the cherry tree story, which is not even real. They made it up. They made up a less interesting story about him and told that to everybody. <laughs> hey, you know George Washington? Oh, that's the cherry tree guy, right? No, that's fake. He murdered people on Christmas. <laughs> that's like in a thousand years from now. They're like, you know George W. Bush led this country to a war all based on a lie? What? I thought he just trampled his father's azalea patch. <laughs> I'm like, scared of this. I'm looking for another. Eight, seven. No, don't get me smoking. <laughs> I want to be on the Disney Channel. Don't, don't get this. I'm like alcoholic. <laughs> I know. I want to be on the Disney Channel. Don't film yeah
Has anyone here heard uh, that new Megan Trainer song? It's called Dear Future Husband. <laughs> um, I have a, have a problem with that song. At one point she's like, I'll be sleeping on the left side of the bed. Open doors for me and you might get some. <laughs> But what she says is kisses. She goes, I'll be sleeping on the left side of the bed. Open doors for me and you might get some kisses. <laughs> Not like the type of comic who wants to talk about <laughs> stage. But if you mean something, you point of all of this is to say that one of my favorite songs of all time is uh, Magic Stick. It's by Little Kim featuring 50 Cent. And why I like this song is, is because 50 Cent comes in and he's like, I have the magic stick. And then Little Kim comes in and she's like, you know what? I have the magic She just Avoid the goddamn cameras while smoking a cigarette because one day I'm gonna be on a Disney Channel. What's up? Yeah. All right. I have breakfast on my head. Nice to meet you. Hi, Tyler. Hi, Claire. Nice to meet you. Hello, Tyler. Hello. Lauren! David! L.A. is a different type of grind, man. I'm in New York, so we do, like, three or four spots a night. And bringing that type of grind here is literally Grand Theft Auto Five, where every show, like, yo, come on my show, then come on my show. So that's two spots, but one's in East L.A., and the other one's in Santa Monica. That's like a mission. That's a mission. It just pops up. By the time you drive there, you're like, what's funny? What's comedy? I uh, graduated college, and uh, college is the worst scam. <laughs> I ever felt for my life. College is all about capitalism. They don't care about your education. Every professor trying to make profit off of you. Every professor, all right, you got to get this book. It's $500. And we're only concentrating on chapters two, four, and six. And I'm the author. <laughs> what? I'm a student, not your biggest fan. <laughs> Did I register for this class on Ticketmaster? <laughs> from New York, went to school in Brooklyn. I was scared to go at first, but Brooklyn's nice now, man. They got a lot of hipsters. I like hipsters, man. I really like hipsters in the hood because they keep the crime down. <laughs> so I seriously think criminals can't rob white people dressed like that. It puts them in a good mood. It shifts the whole momentum of the robbery. It's like, give me your money. <laughs> your dog, she got a top hat on. I can't do it. <laughs> I can't rob Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> go ahead, girl. Go ahead. <laughs> Yo, you think she had a rabbit in that hat? <laughs> I could have got that rabbit and gave it to my daughter. Like, ta-da. <laughs> you like bunnies, baby? <sighs> this is ridiculous, Travis. This is what I'm doing in my life. I'm robbing magicians on the block. That's what I'm doing. I'm done with this. No more. Look at this, man. Brooklyn's new is innovative. They got the Barclays Center in the hood. You know what I did right across you from my hood? You know what I did right across you from my hood? I bought a cupcake. A cupcake. It was eight dollars. It was good. It was good. I'm not gonna lie. I have to let you guys know that my favorite series of films are the Terminator films. I love these movies. Does anybody else like these movies? Oh, what's your favorite? Captain Relaxed? Look at you. Terminator 2, yeah. 
Right. Don't tell me the subtitle of the movie as if I don't. Uh, Judgment Day, yeah. Well, that's cool. So you're like a person that's very impressed by groundbreaking facial morphing technology there before only amazed in Michael Jackson's black and white video. That's the kind of dude you are. But I love Edward Furlong. <laughs> This is the greatest guy in the world. Also, I want you to just know, this is a side detail you can't possibly know about me, but I'm engaged, I'm gonna marry a woman, she's beautiful, and you know who she looks like? She looks exactly like Edward Furlong. <laughs> but as an adult woman, so she's got all the stuff I'm looking for with a lot of the other stuff I'm looking for, you know what I mean? <laughs> Recently, I turned 30 years fun, and my grandmother asked me how I felt about it. Naturally, my answer to that question was that I felt nothing, because that's how she raised me to feel nothing. But I was thinking about, you know, all the achievements in her life when she was my age. Primarily that she had found a man who said that he would pay her bills like he's Ryan Seacrest or something. It's gonna work really great on the coast. That's actually a reference to a Los Angeles billboard. Um, he found a, she found a man uh, who would pay her bills for the rest of her life, support her children, et cetera, et cetera. And I know at this point in the game, if I were to meet a man who would pledge to pay for my existence until I died, uh, the first thing I would do with all that sweet scratch is go down to one of those kiosks in the mall and get a shirt custom printed up that says, this is what a feminist looked like. You know what I'm saying? I can't afford morals. I can't even afford to eat organic. The last time I got dumped to my face, like in person, awful. Like this guy, I guess he was trying to be nice or something, but he, uh, he was just like, this is all he said. He said that I was too much woman. <laughs> That's all he, too much woman. <laughs> and then he just left. Like, has anyone heard that? Have you been given that phrase ever? Too much woman? At first I was like, oh, okay, this guy thinks I have like four vaginas, <laughs> like 30 fallopian tubes, <laughs> estrogen seeping out of my pores 24 seven, which uh, that might be true. Actually, I don't know. I don't know how the female body works. No. <laughs> I just live here, you know? <laughs> yeah. But then I went to, I went to urbandictionary.com and uh, <laughs> I typed in the phrase, too much woman. They were straight up. They were real as <laughs> Urban Dictionary was like, you're fat. You have big thighs. No one's ever gonna love you. <laughs> And, uh, you know what? Hey, guess what? They're not wrong. I have big thighs. <laughs> Secrets out. <laughs> I'm not a thin woman and I have big thighs. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, here's the thing, though. Real talk. Getting real with you. Uh, my thighs? Favorite part of my body. Whoa! Whoa! Did you just say that? I was, uh, I was sitting on his face, <laughs> you know, because I'm a grown-ass woman, and I want to <laughs> And I was sitting on his face, and uh, about like a minute in, <laughs> he gets a full-on panic attack. <laughs> Legit, <laughs> real-ass panic attack, like in the movies. No. Yes. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't breathe. Drowning in my flesh. Not gonna lie, that was like the most turned on <laughs> I have ever been. Just the I have ever. Our parents got us this place. Like, they bought us all this booze. It's all from. It's 1999. We're only going to be 17 once. Like, we're going crazy. This is me and my crew. We've been singing for five years. We were discovered at Six Flags 
Six Flags Germany. We love you, Six Flags. <laughs> Girl, I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy you came to the show. I'm so happy you're in my house. Love you, baby. We love you, too. This is a song for you. It's called Get Out of My House. We love you. Good night. <laughs>